No, I didn't put the ad in the paper for my secretary. It was the employment agency that did it. Mm, but it wasn't too difficult to tell who the prospective employer was. The ad read something like, a chance to work in the exciting world of television journalism with prominent news. <laughs> well, that could have been you, Nancy. You did such a good job during the cold television. That's right, and I'm warning you. Geraldine Saxon has her way. You're going to be right back in front of the camera. Oh, no, 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 no I don't think so. I mean, it was fine talking about while you were ill, but I don't know if as far as uh, a regular thing. Well, I know how busy you are, but maybe you should consider getting yourself a secretary too. Assuming you could find one as good as uh, Nora Fulton. Right, she is. Because she has absolutely no broadcast experience, but she's bright and she's willing. <laughs> and no thanks. I know. I'm, it, I'm sorry to say it, but it's true. I don't like to talk behind people's backs, but in this case, what right. is it that you think that she's too equipment? <laughs> After all, Nicole is a reporter. The nosy could be a good quality. Not in this case, it isn't. She is always looking at everything in this room. Poking around the shelves and picking up scraps of paper. Oh, but, but there's nothing wrong with that. The books are meant to be looked at. And it's natural for people to pick up scraps of paper. Oh, no, but you see, there is nothing casual about it with Nora. I know I shouldn't have said anything. I'm I'm speaking out of turn. No, no, I didn't say no, that. No, no, I will just stick with what I'm good at and not be analyzing people anymore. I'm afraid it's a case of old-fashioned jealousy. <laughs> well, you see, I work here at home a lot, and naturally Nora's here too. And ah, and sometimes their uh, duties overlap. Yes, exactly. I as you know, Mrs. Goodman likes to reign supreme. <laughs> Nicole, do uh, you really know Nora Fulton? Well, yes, I know her as well as you can know any new employee. Well, I'm sure she's going to be just fine. She's a bit tense now, but that's not surprising. It's very to me. Oh, you will, I'm sure. I hope Miles remembers the call. Look, why don't we go inside? It's getting awfully chilly out here. Okay. anything about all this. You gave me no idea how many tests I was going to have to be put through. Well, I didn't give you an exact count because I didn't know myself. I didn't know us doctors. Sometimes we get carried away. One test may inspire another. Well, that's fine for guinea pigs. Not for me. Thank you. And you know, slightly, I'm a human being. The scout's honor. They were all human tests. Well, you'd never know it. Have you seen some of the machinery they have downstairs? Great big giant steel monsters right out of Star Wars. I thought they were going to eat me alive. Come on, they're really wonderful devices, fantastic diagnostic tools. Dr. Kavanaugh, I told you that I was in a play that goes into preview two weeks from today. Now, if I don't get back from rehearsal, they'll find somebody else. I promise you, give us one day more, two at the most, and we will turn you loose on an unsuspecting public. Do you know what I hate the most? Nobody tells me anything. I get poked and prodded and practically devoured by machines, and nobody gives me one word about what they're looking for. Well, sometimes when people don't talk, it means they don't have anything to say. And what do you have to say, Doctor? Don't you have anything to say? Yes, I do. That's why I'm here instead of back home eating Boston cream pie. I came down here especially to ask you. Actually, to pay you just to be patient. And that's, that's where the word comes from. Patience. Well, if nobody else will tell me what they're looking for, maybe you will. Well, I've already told you it could be a hundred. You ordered the diagnostic test. Now, you must know what they will or won't prove. You decided something about me the first ten minutes that you met me, and I want to know what it is. I decided that you were much too beautiful to be That's the most evasive answer I think I've ever heard in my life. Probably the nicest.
I thought that he was the only man for me, but 